This is an HDMI smartphone mirroring demo for the Rolls-Royce Phantom years 2004 to 2009 as shown on the BMW 5 Series. The 5 Series and the Rolls-Royce Phantom have identical screens. Watch this entire video to find out how to add this and other products to your BMW factory screen. NavTool, established in 2002. See description below the video for product information. Please expand the description section if watching this video on a mobile device. All NavTool products are 100% made and manufactured in the USA. Please support American jobs. Hello everyone. In this video we're going to show you two interfaces. For BMW with CCC radio 2003 up to 2010. It works with the large 8.8 .8 inch screens on all BMWs including X5 and a smaller 6.5 inch screen. So both sides are good, 8.8 .8 inch and 6.5 inch diagonal. We're going to show you wireless mirroring with front and rear camera inputs. You can wirelessly mirror iPhone and Android devices. And we're going to show you Apple CarPlay and Android Auto made in USA and they're all controlled with a factory dial joystick of the car, the factory iDrive, so no external product needed, same as 2018 BMW, same idea. So again, compatible with wireless mirroring for iPhone and Android, and Apple CarPlay with Android Auto, all controlled through the factory joystick, and compatible with 8.8 inch screen and smaller 6.5 inch screen, so both size screens are compatible on all cars. This particular demo we're going to show you on BMW 5 Series, all BMWs with the, this type of menu. It is CCC BMW menu. So when you have the info in the middle and you got four tabs around, it's compatible. So all BMW 2003, 2010, X5, 2007, 2010. Okay, so first we're gonna show you a particular vehicle disassembly. We have to remove the screen on top, which is only two screws and the screen comes out, and the radio on the bottom. Let's get to the disassembly. First step of the removal process, remove two screws so you can remove the panel. All you need is a T15 Torx. So basically this is your T15. You got two T15 screws that you're going to remove and the screen is going to come out. Once you remove the screws, simply flip down the screen and pull it out. Once you pull it out, you disconnect the connectors in the back because that's what we need to access. And This is the connector that we're going to work on. And the rest is behind the radio, so we remove the screen. This connector is a little bit hard to take out, the don't break it, just give it a little pull so it can come out. Please do not connect power to the screen until you power up the interface. After you connect power to the interface, you will see in the green LED light. Only after that should you connect power to the screen. The black power connector of the screen should be connected last. After you remove the screen, we're going to go ahead and remove the radio. Now how do you remove the radio? First we have to remove this whole panel, it just pops out. Using a simple tool like this, we're going to pop the panel out and it just comes out, really nothing is holding it. So we just need to find a place to grab the panel and it's going to come. The whole panel just held by clips everywhere. So let's start with one of the corners. So there's nothing holding this panel, there's no screws. Just the whole panel comes out all the way from one end to another. So you go pull it out and then there are harnesses here to disconnect. Okay, so pull the panel out and in the back here you got a connector that we need to remove. So as you can see, this is the back of the panel. There's nothing here except for this pins and the pins that go into the panel to this plastic pieces and you can 
remove it and put it on as many times as you want. It's designed not to ever be loose or rattle. And all you got is one connector. Now, the radio, you got two Phillips screws you need to remove. And then from the bottom, we're gonna come out. So let's start by removing those two Phillips screws. Now we're gonna go ahead and remove the screws on both sides. Now once you remove the screws, you need to go ahead and pull this panel out. So it starts from the bottom. So this whole panel pulls out. Okay, so this piece comes out actually you don't need so so this comes out now we need to come out this wood has to come out too so you can disconnect this piece just go ahead and disconnect it there's nothing here Disconnect all the connectors. Just needs a little bit of force. All right. So there's nothing here. There's nothing you can break. This is actually good quality metal pieces and you just need a little bit of force you got two clips here and these are all metal pieces so it just comes out and don't forget you got two connectors on each side when you're gonna be installed and reconnect so now the only thing that's holding it is those four screws these four screws are holding the radio for it to come out after you remove the screws you're gonna go ahead and pull this radio out you need to pull the radio out to access one of the connectors in the back so you pull the radio out and you can cover this over here, the material to gain access and you will need to gain access to the main connect in the back of the radio. And the main connect in the back of the radio is what's going to give you everything that you need. Do not forget to program the interface. All interfaces are stripped blank as they need to be configured by the installer or end user. Programming process will take less than one minute and can be performed using Windows or Mac computer. How to update the software? It doesn't matter what you're updating, whether you're updating camera interface, video in motion interface, wireless mirroring interface, or Apple CarPlay interface. The process of update is identical. Updater works on Mac and Windows based PC, so we have for both Windows and Mac. To update, you need a cable like this, it's a standard cable. One end of the cable is micro USB and the other is a standard USB. This goes into the computer and the micro USB goes into the interface. Connect this end into the computer, Mac or Windows. Connect the other end into your interface you're updating. Again, any interface. Once the interface is connected, everything information is going to appear on the screen and install desired software. Just for the test purposes, we're going to show you how to update it with uh, Cadillac CTS software, Video in Motion and hit install. So now it's installing and shows you progress bar and a percentage. So it takes only seconds to update it. So you download the updater from the website for Mac or Windows, that's gonna take you approximately 60 seconds. And then the update process takes only another minute or so. This is how to update the interface. So we're showing you the update process and the entire process only takes less than a minute.
okay, the update process is done and it's 99%, it says do not disconnect. In about a second, it's going to tell you that it's complete and you can disconnect the interface. There you go, device settings updated and you're done. So entire update process takes only about two minutes. You download software from the website for Mac or Windows, about a minute, and update takes another minute. And all you need is a cable like this. So USB cable to micro USB. Wireless harness installation. The installation procedure for this interface is identical whether you're installing Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, or HDMI smartphone mirroring. It doesn't matter if you install an Apple CarPlay with Android Auto or smartphone mirroring. Installation of the wiring harness is identical. For Apple CarPlay, you will need this microphone. It has a clip. It clips to the headliner from the back end. And this is hidden inside the headliner, so you will have just the microphone. You install the plug and play harness, you route the microphone through the side of the car. We'll give you plug and play harness. You have the microphone input on it. You got audio output. RCA is the connect to cars auxiliary, so you run it through inside into cars auxiliary jack. You got four video inputs, but you're only using two. We can either support DVD player or front and rear camera, like in this car. We're gonna show you front and rear cameras. And then you got the digital cables. So you're going to connect like this with a factory one. This is going to go back into the screen. This you're going to plug into the interface and you're going to hide the interface in the back of the dash. So basically with all the wiring harness and then this end of the wiring harness. So this is your complete harness right here. So factory cable in here this cable back into the screen this into the harness that plugs in into the back of the radio we're going to show you that part audio rcas go to the audio auxiliary jack and then you got front and rear camera if you install any cameras if not you don't have to do anything this is not used and this is your microphone input so basically this is your whole entire wiring harness including microphone so you're connecting to the factory cable back into the screen this connects this is a factory one back into the screen and this to the lower harness that you're going to install in the back of the radio and then you program it as shown in the previous step if you install any of the cameras you're going to use it in reverse rear camera, in drive factory camera up to 10 miles an hour. You can also enable to watch any of the cameras while driving at any time. And all the controls of the via factory iDrive button that are located in the middle. We'll show you how to control it in a second. Now let's install, so we installed the top harness. Now let's install the harness that goes in the back of the radio. In the, you wanna take out the radio and access the main connector. Once you access the main connector, we gave you an identical connector like this. The only difference is you need to move the fiber optic into here from the factory one. It is very easy to take out. You just release this thing. You pick it up and the fiber optic slides out just like this. Probably even do it with your fingernail. So slide it out and then remember the position was in the last position. So take the connector that we gave you and slide it into the same position. That's it. Now this end you plug it into the factory harness. And then now the end with the fiber optic, you plug it back into the radio. And all you gotta do is connect these two ends together. This end that you have in the T-harness you install, 
it plugs in together with this end. You're going to do it all behind the dash, obviously, but these are the two ends that have to come together. So the interface that you plugged in in the back of the radio, so you got a T-harness, the new T-harness you install. You're going to route it through the back of the radio, and you're going to connect it together with the, the harness that you install on top behind the screen with all the RCAs. And then this is going to plug in directly into the radio. Temporarily we're going to move the radio back into its position. We're not closing anything permanently because we're going to test everything first. So when you do the installation you want to test everything and only then start putting all the wires neatly and closing everything. So for now we're just putting it into the place into its location so it's just going to sit there. But we're not going to close it permanently. Let the radio hang out over here. We're going to have to go and reinstall the screen back. And then after we reinstall the screen, we're going to put everything on, make sure everything fires up, make sure you can control the car play, and we're going to go from there. So let's reinstall the screen. If you're installing any camera, you're going to route them through here. You're going to, don't forget to route your microphone from under the dashboard. You can bring it up and nicely hide it. Uh, so microphone under the dash and hide it. What are your RCAs? You got two audio RCAs. Run them behind the dash into your car's auxiliary jack or a ref modulator, a fan modulator if you don't have auxiliary. If you're not installing any cameras, you're done. We're also going to install two cameras for the demo purposes to show you. So after you install it, put the interface and close it up. All right, so now you go ahead and connect your interface, plug it in. Then you will need a cable. We're using a long cable. This is an iPhone cable. It is pretty long. You can see how long it is. The reason it's so long is because we can route it through inside into the armrest. So this way it's like original. You can also run a regular USB cable so you can plug in either lightning or standard USB if you're using both iPhone and Android for Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Uh, it's up to you actually the length of cable you use. We decided to use the long one like this so we can route it nicely into the armrest or any place in the car you like. And now you connected everything, reinstall the screen so basically for now we you should be doing the same way before you close the car you want to test everything make sure your installation is proper make sure your program is proper when you know everything is work you start doing all the beautifications and closing of everything this way you don't waste any time and you know that you did everything correctly and program everything correctly now we're going to reinstall the screen all right we're going to show you 8.8 .8 inch screen and 6.5 inch screen both iphone apple carplay and android auto the interfaces are controlled by the factory joystick, either this type of joystick, it's up to newer 2008-2009 vehicles. You have this type of joystick, and then you have this type of joystick. So we control with any of the joysticks. So this is your pretty much 3 series and older 5 series and 6 series. This is X5 and X6, 2007-2010 or also X101 series and this is your 5 and 6 series 2009-2010 also this is available for newer cars obviously uh, but this for CCC CarPlay and CCC BMW Android Auto so let's reinstall the screen and check it out now the video switching on any of those are done with the menu button so it doesn't matter what joystick you have either one that you have to switch the inputs you're gonna do menu menu hold activates menu on this menu on this on all of them it's the menu button that activates the interface and the menu button is what makes it work 
to switch inputs so if you're using additional inputs for cameras or DVD it's always menu button so basically press and hold menu to activate smartphone mirroring press and hold menu to activate Apple CarPlay single press cycles the inputs and then press and hold to go back into the navigation now we're going to reinstall the screen and show you how everything works so basically all the controls so it doesn't matter which joystick you use which type of joystick you're going to use you you always got left right up down enter so on any joystick that you're using whether it's this kind or this kind it's left right up down enter so left right up down enter all the features are the same we're going to show you so it's basically it's natural controls so all control naturally so if you need to go down, rotate through the menus in CarPlay, and then draw it already, go down, and basically this is the controls. Put your interface out of the way for now. Take your screen and install the screen back into the car. Connect two connectors, the video plug that's on the side, and the power plug in the back, or it could be both on the sides. So we're going to plug everything in, start the car, and make sure that everything works. This is a demo of Apple CarPlay and Android Auto with a BMW 8.8 inch screen. So we'll put the screen, not permanently, but just for it to stay there, we're going to start the car. The screen comes on. Now, doesn't matter what joystick you have, either one, you're always going to press the menu button to switch so I'm gonna go ahead and press the menu button over here and when I press the menu button I'm gonna be in CarPlay so this is the CarPlay menu now we're connecting the phone it says CarPlay and the CarPlay is going to appear on the screen so once the CarPlay appears so this is your CarPlay. Now I can control with the joystick. So as you hear me, I'm rotating the joystick as I'm rotating the highlights change its position. Now we made it so it is in the right position. Now we also got camera, rear view camera. We got front camera. And we got CarPlay. The CarPlay is not stretch because otherwise the icon would stretch. This is its normal position, same way as the CarPlay would be displayed on a new 2018 Mercedes or BMW or any other car. So if you follow the blue highlight, this is our home button right here. This is our recent apps. So we got the phone app. So obviously the phone opens up and we can dial the number and I'm controlling everything through the joystick. So it uses the factory joystick. So basically rotate, enter. So rotate number three, enter. Rotate number four, enter. We can go back into the menu. It check cameras. Now to exit out of the menu, go to home. It brings us home. And then doesn't matter what menu you're in, basically. If you go into maps, inside maps we go to destinations, inside destinations you can choose to go to voice, either you can activate it by Siri or by keyboard and inside the keyboard you can enter whatever address you want. So this is CarPlay, the same CarPlay as in any car, this is not mirroring, this is actual CarPlay. So now that we know everything works. We can go ahead and test out Android Auto. You got your recent apps here, so if you see I'm highlighting the recent apps. So I can go into Maps, and then the running app becomes on top. I can go into any other app that I want to. I can go into Phone Calls. I can go into my recent. I can go to my contacts if I have any contacts. I can go basically anywhere I want. And audio is heard through auxiliary so you set your radio to auxiliary but basically you know 
you get real CarPlay. In reverse, you get your rear view camera. In drive, you get front camera up to 10 miles an hour. After 10 miles an hour, the camera will shut off. If you're not adding any cameras, it's okay. You don't have to do anything. And it doesn't matter what screen you're on. So you see I'm on the CarPlay screen, I got the cameras. If I get out of the CarPlay screen on the factory screen, I do the same thing in reverse. I get rear view camera. In drive, I got the camera. Cameras, we can change if you want as a video input. We can make it full screen. Same thing in reverse. If you really want to have full screen, you can do the full screen. All right, but it knows the last state. So if you're on a home screen or in a CarPlay screen, you can also do reverse and it's gonna do the same thing. So this is 8.8 inch screens that for cars with navigation on BMW CCC up to BMW 2010. We're also gonna show you six and a half inch screen after we do the 10 inch screen so you can see it works on both. Uh, but this is the 10 inch screen and you get all your CarPlay. So if you ever try CarPlay in another car, CarPlay is a CarPlay in any car. All updates are inside CarPlay. So if tomorrow they add Waze or Google Maps in iOS 12 or, or any other features, it's inside the CarPlay. You don't have to update anything. Whatever features are added inside the iPhone, it will automatically translate into your screen over here. So basically you got all your options here. So whatever apps you install, if you install a bunch of apps, you're gonna see all your apps. So I'm just gonna connect another phone with, an, with a lot of apps and you'll be able to see that. If I connect another phone, and this phone has many more apps. Watch this. Once the CarPlay connects, you're gonna have way more apps. Look at the amount of apps we got here. So whatever apps you install, this is what you get. So this is just like CarPlay in the BMW modern day. We're going to tune in radio, radio launches. When the app boots up, we can select pretty much any we can go to local radio, select any station, and basically the station is going to play for you. All right, now we're going to show you a demo of Android Auto, and we're going to show you a demo of six and a half inch screen. If you have Android phone, you take your Android phone, you plug it in. Android Auto appears on the screen and you basically use your Android Auto right on the car screen and that's it you have your Android right on the phone or right on your front screen and you control everything through the joystick same way so this is your menu on the bottom right there so you got your music apps and again everything any joystick you use just like in CarPlay mode any joystick that you use, same idea. Rotate left, right, enter, and menu to change. So basically, it's menu button to change inputs. Press and hold to activate the interface. Press and hold to deactivate. Left, right, enter, and down, up if you need, like in this mode. Then we got the main menu in the middle. Then you got the phone callings. If you got apps installed, it's all gonna show. We're just showing you basically. But you got Android Auto. This is your Android Auto, just like any other car, just like as 2018 BMW or any car that has Android Auto. This is not mirroring. This is real Android Auto. If you got Waze installed, you can have Waze. You can have both maps. You can have Google Maps, and you can have Waze. So we got the maps. We actually don't have Google nothing running here. So all your apps are here your music apps are here so if you have a couple of music apps running you're gonna have your music apps and you can select you just gotta install a couple of different music apps and that's it other than that you can press and hold go back to factory screen press and hold the menu button and again you enter in carplay and this is android auto this is your android auto menu you just enter whatever you want to do now we're going to show you everything the same on a six and a half inch screen this is a demo of Apple CarPlay and Android Auto in the BMW with a six and a half inch screen. All right, so now we're gonna demo six and a half inch. Don't mind the factory screen because it's the radio from the big 8.8 inch screen, but we're gonna show you how the CarPlay and Android Auto works. So you're gonna press and hold the menu on your iDrive. 
and now you got perfectly center image and on that image we're going to show you Apple CarPlay and Android Auto so first let's show you the demo of Android Auto so we're connecting our phone and Android Auto appears so if your car has no navigation a six, six and a half inch screen you can have your Android Auto right there Android Auto swipe to unlock and now you got the Android Auto menu down here so whatever you select is now going to appear on your um, so you got the main menu see everything is perfectly centered and everything else there are no issues you got the home screen we got our phone if you have the phone you can dial your phone if you have music apps obviously this is your phone press down return to home then over here where the music if you have music apps installed she says play some we don't have music app you can all shop if uh, yeah, tune in radio and wow I forgot the name of the app for a second there uh, the Spotify Pandora you know all kinds of apps you can install so basically this is six and a half inch Android Auto and we're gonna show you six and a half inch Apple CarPlay and then you got the same way you got the camera in reverse you got the rear camera as you can see in drive you got the front camera right there in park it goes back to Android Auto screen if you got your factory you can by pressing the menu you can cycle through the cameras and if you got your factory screen again this is the factory screen you put in reverse rear camera in drive front camera up to 10 miles an hour and you can manually cycle all the cameras you want press and hold the menu you got the Android Auto and cycle now let's show you iPhone on the six and a half inch screen alright so now we're gonna connect to our iPhone so press and hold the menu on your iDrive joystick the six and a half inch again everything is perfectly centered connect your iPhone CarPlay is on CarPlay comes up on the screen you control everything through the iDrive joystick all the options are here that's it you got six and a half inch screen no navigation cars and you have your CarPlay you got all your applications as I'm rotating the joystick you can follow the blue highlight phone music maps messages now playing return podcast audio books and this is all done with the joystick you can go into tune and radio obviously play pause over here you got the home button press enter to go home you got recent apps you got your phone calls Siri requires internet connection obviously and cycle the cameras again and then you got your maps and then you got your you can go ahead and dial the phone so let's go ahead now two one two five 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 one two one two and you can go ahead and just simply call and that's it it's gonna make a phone call we don't have the sim card but it will make a call otherwise so you got Android Auto on BMW CCC we make it for all other cars we make it for all BMWs and all makes and models for newer one this particular demo is from BMW CCC 2003 to 2010 radios we make it obviously for the CIC as well this is a demo of the HDMI smartphone mirroring for iPhone and Android in a BMW with an 8.8 inch screen alright so now we're gonna demo 8.8 inch screen if you see any lines running they're really not there in real life this is just for the that's how camera is capturing the screen so again press the menu to switch the mirroring you can do iPhone or Android mirroring you see it's not full screen you can do it full screen you see wide image large and normal this is its normal position larger and wide so this is normal aspect ratio you know this is how the phone is supposed to be displayed basically again you can do you know Waze application or any other app you can change you know if you want to if you really like the full screen you can change it to full screen or normal or full screen videos or anything like that let's try YouTube app actually so this is YouTube video 
wide, large, wide screen. It's a pretty dark video. Some kind of jet commercial. Oh, there you go. So you got normal, large, and wide. Normal, large, wide. So this is full screen image, pretty much. If you like it full screen, this is your 8.8, and you can change any size that you like. iPhone and Android, you can do wirelessly. And iPhone through the cable is my favorite personal. You run the cable through inside. And you got, again, you got your cameras, rear view camera. And the cameras all save its own settings so you can do. And then same thing from factory screen. So if you go back to factory screen, camera same way, reverse drive. If you're not installing cameras, there's no difference. Nothing's going to change in reverse. Basically, it's going to stay on the screen, whatever you're watching, whether it's factory screen or mirroring screen. This is a demo of HDMI smartphone mirroring for iPhone or Android in a BMW with a six and a half inch screen. Now let's demo mirroring. Mirroring works on both six and a half inch screen and 8.8. .8. This is six and a half inch demo. Press and hold the menu to switch. And there you go, you got mirroring. This is your mirroring on a phone. Mirroring, there's not much to demo. Whatever you see on the phone screen, same thing you're gonna see on your car screen. So basically duplicates your phone screen to the car screen. You can mirror Android wirelessly, iPhone wirelessly, over the wire, my preferred way. Run the wire into the middle of the armrest and it's faster connection and it also charges the phone. So basically, if you have no navigation, you can use Google Maps or Waze for navigation. And it's mirroring. Basically creates a mirror image of your phone. So whatever you're running here, you can run there. You can have your Google Maps, Waze. Let me show you Google Maps. Actually, let me show you Waze. So basically, right there, you got your Waze. So if your car has no navigation, I have navigation. You don't even need Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. If you want a cheaper version, you got a full screen right there. Mirror iPhone or Android wirelessly. iPhone, you can do with a wire. My favorite way is with a wire. And let me show you the demo of mirroring on 8.8 .8 inch screen which is the bigger one and the same thing you got the cameras you got reverse camera and then drive you got front camera and then park you got back to your mirroring or if you're in a factory menu same thing in reverse you got rear camera and drive front camera if you're not installing any cameras you don't have to worry about it nothing's gonna happen when you switch to reverse or into drive it's just gonna stay in the factory screen or on the mirroring screen but Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel by clicking the link at the bottom left or click the link on the right side of the screen to watch another video.